computer. All right. <laughs> Today. Well, good evening, Coffee with Kruger again, and let's open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for giving us the pure, clear gospel message, which uh, toward the end of this month, we're going to be celebrating the Reformation um, anniversary. Uh, thankful for the recognition of the clear reminder that we're saved by grace through faith on account of Jesus Christ. As we look at the other religions that are around us and some that are pretty much far out, like Scientology, uh, we become even um, more thankful for having grounded us in, in the true word as revealed in Holy Scripture. God bless us in our study now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Scientology is what we're going to look at this uh, what is Scientology? evening. Do any of you know anybody? Any famous people yeah. are uh, in Scientology? Oh, God. Um, what's his name from Saturday Night Live? John Travolta. Right. Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. <laughs> Loquito. <laughs> <laughs> so you have some there. And they are proponents. They spend a lot of money on this... Uh, religion it the word and i'm going to be looking at my notes here quite a bit tonight because i by nature don't know much about this the word brings to mind uh images of hollywood and celebrities mm -hmm. glitz and glamour lots of money yeah and at its core it's a self-help religion it was started by the writer uh, l ron Ron Hubbard. And a lot of things are cloaked in mystery. But we but as you get higher up in the doctrine and in the in the in their system, uh, the initiate learns more. So let's see what we can discover about uh, this faith. First of all, Scientology was uh, invented by a man named Ron Hubbard, uh, who was, um, uh, who attended George Washington University, but then dropped out and became a writer. And he went into science fiction and he's a number of best-selling books. He de developed an interest in exploring uh, and uh, during the winter of 1940-41, he, uh, he, he uh, received a license as a master of steam and motor vessels and master of sail vessels. This later on would be part of the science of the religion. So this lent itself to Hubbard's service during World War II. And at the end of the war, he ended up uh, at, a, at the hospital in Oak Knoll suffering from war-related ailments. So he began to think about his human condition, decided to undertake a quest to discover science of the mind. And from this came the invention of Scientology. Yeah. In 1950, Hubbard introduced his ideas into the book called Dianetics, the Modern Science yes. of Mental Health. He believed that the basic principle of human existence is survival. Things that lead to survival are things that are good and pleasurable, while things that are counter-survival are negative. So a normal analytical mind will make the most of the good and pleasurable. And so he contends our minds are not working properly, and a reactive rather than an analytical mind takes over and creates negative images that he calls engrams, E-N-G-R-A-M-S. He believed that people needed to confront and eliminate these engrams, these negative things, to return to the way the mind should work. And so he created Scientology for that purpose. So the most famous uh, of the Scientologists, probably Tom Cruise. 
Other ones, uh, you mentioned John Travolta, um, Michael Penna, Kirstie Alley, Catherine Bell, uh, Elizabeth Moss, and uh, a lot of others. And right now, um, David Miscavige, I think is his name, is a leader of the Church of Scientology. How many people are Scientologists? Well, the numbers are difficult to produce, but most people say around 25,000. And um, that's in the United States, plus whatever there is in other, other nations. So Scientology didn't start out as a religion. It started out as um, on counseling. And Hubbard's Dianetics was based on counseling regarding the unconscious scars from negative memories. And so it began to transition with Hubbard's discussion of a word called thetans, T-H-E-T-A-N-S, thetans, which is human immortal souls. According to Scientology, man is an immortal spiritual being that is, the soul has lived for billions of years before being here on earth. And our experience extends well beyond a single lifetime. And we are sort of like reincarnated. Our capabilities are unlimited, even if we do not uh, realize this at present. So, what are some of the tenets of Scientology? As I mentioned before, the first one is survival. Things that lead to survival are the things that are good. Things that are negative are counter survival. The engrams is the analytical mind and the decisions we make uh, for our survival. In times of trauma, the reactive mind takes over and these engrams create scars on the reactive mind. In order to get rid of the engrams in our reactive mind, they, the religion has something called auditing. Have you ever been audited? Well, you get audited in Scientology all the time. To get rid of the engrams, a person goes through a therapeutic process, sort of like a lie detector called auditing where an individual is asked a series of questions designed to purge the engrams and allow the analytical mind to regain control. This is accomplished with the use of an electro psychometer or an e-meter, a device that Hubbard produced, which measures the strength of an electric current that is run through an individual's body as the person answers the auditor's questions. E-meter readings indicate changes in emotional stress and allow the identification of engrams. So Scientology, um, the thetans, or immortal souls, are trapped in multiple bodies over various lifetimes. According to Hubbard, thetans originated billions of years ago with the original cause. Thetans emerged early in creation and through their interaction created the physical universe of matter, energy, space, and time. So our mind, our minds collectively created everything that we believe that is around us. And so over time, the Thetans fell into the physical universe and the way it happened is they fell into volcanoes and hydrogen bombs came on them and they've got trapped and slowly got stripped of their creative abilities and memories of who they were and eventually ended up on earth that way. Anyway, after purging the mind of these uh, reactive engrams from all these lifetimes, and not just your mother, <laughs> But all the other negatives, the, I told you not to do this. How many times do I have to tell you? You know, you'll have all the negatives. So all the events that have caused us to 
react to things in an emotional way that isn't analytical. All of these got to be stripped. They have to all be stripped of the creative abilities. Then a thetan, that's your immortal soul, can become clear. Thetans who become clear reach a higher level of ethical and moral standards, are more creative, with greater control of their environment, and are less suspicious of the IRS, of the um, uh, are less suspicious to disease. This is the goal of Scientology. Clear thetans can ascend to yet higher levels in the church and become something called operating thetans. And I, uh, well, you following me so far? <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Operating thetans are called OTs. They can expand themselves by identifying with larger realities called dynamics. So these high operating thetans um, continue to work upward, work for the church harder, purify themselves. And so anybody who is not quite there yet uh, may be held down because of chemical abuse, drug abuse. And so they have big drug clinics. And uh, they believe that any kind of medicine is a poison to the system. So dislodge, to dislodge the, the, the toxins of the drugs and the chemical residues that all these processed foods, everything else is putting into you, uh, people can participate in a purification rundown, which involves sweating in a sauna for several hours, mega vitamin and mineral dosages, extra oil, good nutrition, and adequate rest. So the creed is that man is a uh, human being is, is uh, the soul is essentially good seeking to survive. And that depends upon attaining brotherhood with one with the universe. Ever say uh, nature told me or the universe told me your people saying that on television the last few years that comes from Scientology it comes from Hollywood. Hubbard believed that there is such a thing as a supreme being. But he says it's up to every person to figure out, to come to their own conclusions as to who that human being is. So how does Scientology compare with Christianity? Well, Christians believe humans exist to glorify God, don't they? Scientology has the basic principle to survive. Christians believe humans exist for God. Uh, they believe that they'll exist for themselves. Christians believe that we die once and we go to heaven or hell. Scientology puts forth that spirits called thetans occupy multiple bodies over multiple lifetimes and don't go to heaven or hell. Christians assert that we all sin and fall short and that sin is an incurable disease apart from salvation in Jesus Christ. Scientology says, no, we are basically good. We just sometimes get a reactive mind thinking we're bad. Christians believe we need a savior. Scientology believes we are our own savior. Christianity puts God first. Scientology puts themselves first. Now, um, there have been a, a number of things you can read about Scientology and YouTubes that you can watch about Scientology, if you want. Some interesting YouTubes on the subject of people who have left Scientology. And it's very hard to leave Scientology yeah. because um, 
they have a shunning going on, like some other religions do, uh, where they'll actually go out and do everything possible to ridicule your name and to bring you back. If you become part of a science, part of a member of Scientology, and the rest of your family is not, you're to disassociate, they call it, from the rest of your family and have nothing to do with them anymore. And so shunning and disassociation become very much a part of breaking up families. When you become somebody like Tom Cruise, you elevate yourself to something called C Corps and uh, C Org. And they go on a ship and they become a certain level where they learn the most secret truths about what happened billions of years ago. And you then, as in a higher level, give your soul to Scientology for one billion years. One billion years. And then you can break free if you want. So these are some of the things from, from this. And um, it's become very secretive. It's become very, once you're in it, it's very hard to get out. And the people are pretty fanatic that are in it. Okay, I'm going to open it up for questions or discussion now for the last uh, few minutes. Uh, thoughts? Is Bill Gates a member? <laughs> uh, don't think he's, doesn't seem to be a Christian is what I've gathered over the years. Every time <laughs> I try to do a search of a Christian word, they don't even know what it is. Someone told me the other day, I think it was Dale, they tried to look up the word exegesis uh, in the Google and it didn't come up. <laughs> My. Really? Yeah, well, that's been a problem from day one with Microsoft. I don't think Apple's any better. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, when you were going through all, I don't even know what those words were, and talking about them, it's like, the average Scientologist, they don't understand all that, do they? I I don't know what they understand. I think a person goes in it like they do any cult because they have friends that are telling them it is makes you healthier, it's more successful. And, and probably they come in because of a friend. But they, I can they, I can see some of their eating restrictions making them healthier. I can understand that, but there's a lot of religions that do that. That's right. So it's it's really a strange religion and one that I I don't I just read about it. I don't haven't spent much time uh, delving into it. Have any of you? I would guess that maybe those who join that cult do it and pretend they understand it. So they'll be accepted. Yeah, probably so. Some years ago, um, we had some neighbors that were into it. And um, I remember we were doing a, a joint yard sale with them and they had all those books, um, Dianetics, I think it was called. And I didn't know what it was at the time. And uh, later on, somebody told me, oh, they're really into Scientology. I'm like, what is that? And <laughs> so um, they, the way they got people to, I don't know if they got a call from some higher up or something, but you would fill out a questionnaire about your personality type. And that was kind of the way they got people um, interested in the religion or the Scientology. And um, so I didn't really know anything about it. And then I lived in Germany for a little while and they had at that time um, banished that. So you couldn't be a Scientologist in Germany <laughs> legally. So that was, that was kind of interesting. Yeah. Really? So, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know if it's still like that because that was back in 97. Um, but anyway, that was the first I'd heard about it. And then the whole thing with Tom Cruise and then his uh, his wife, 
finding a very clever way to extricate herself from that and take the daughter, that that was really a big uh, blow to the Scientology church because they really like um, the beautiful people because it's a very narcissistic kind of um, philosophy all about, oh, it's all about me and I'm a co-creator and um, and all that. It, I think that was a big blow to them. And there's another person, she used to be on King of Queens. Yeah. And he wrote, she came out against it. And, um, but she said they tried to destroy her um, in Hollywood because she was pretty vocal. I, I can't remember her yeah, name. Leah Remini. What was her name? Leah Remini. Leah Remini. Yeah. So anyway, um, it's pretty interesting. And it's yeah. weird to think that somebody would put so much credence into um, a made up religion by a science fiction writer. <laughs> Just, yeah, yeah why? <laughs> it's, it's amazing how these things take off. Well, thank you for that, Wendy. You got some experience from neighbors in Germany. <laughs> Any other thoughts, questions? I um, go on to another subject then for a couple minutes. Have you heard of Hamas? Yes. You talked about it last week. Yeah. Let me see if I can pull. It, I saw something last night about Hamas and um, the word, the translation of that word means violence. And um, it's in the, actually in the Bible, I, I, I heard. Um, but it means something different in Arabic. It means like zeal and fire. And in um, Hebrew, it means violence and destruction. So it's it's really interesting. It's the same word, but um, has different translations. Let me um, try to uh, bring it up here for you. Um, share screen. Bible. You see the Bible there? Yes. Okay. I got to move you people out of the way so I can see it. No offense. Mm -hmm. but this is a uh, ESV version, Strong's Bible. This means if I press on a word, it'll go to the original language. So in chapter six of Genesis, remember the we talked about the world was becoming so terrible that the Lord uh, said that uh, no flesh will survive and and uh, that um, the flood would come. No, Right before the flood, it says, now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, like Wendy was saying, and the earth was filled with violence. And then down here, the earth was filled with violence, same word. Let's look up that word in the Hebrew, but before I do so, Jesus says in Matthew that as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be the coming of the Son of Man. So it's just kind of interesting thing. You look up the word violent, this word, and I, I don't know if you can see it. Uh -huh. but it's this word is called hamas, meaning violence. It's right there in the Hebrew in Genesis as the reason for the flood, violence, and the same way in the next verse. Then if you go to the psalm that said uh, back uh, the day that the invasion took place, when the Hamas fired the rockets into Israel, they were praying the 27th psalm. Mm -hmm. And it's like part of the like the Lord's Prayer. It goes, um, my heart says to you, your face, Lord, do I seek? I not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. Um, and on and on it goes. And then it says in verse 20, 12, give me not up to the will of my adversaries. 
for false witnesses have risen against me and they breathe out Hamas. The very word that they spoke as the rockets fell on them a week ago. It's just kind of coincidental. Yeah. There you have it. Isn't that something? Yes. So if, if anybody's interested in that, um, last night I watched a YouTube by, uh, I believe his name is Jonathan Kahn, and he's a Messianic rabbi. And yeah. he, he, he went really in depth. He had the same scriptures. And I just found it really, really interesting. And there were so many um, coincidences, like you just said about the, they were praying that very prayer. And he also likened it to 50 years ago. So this is the Jubilee of 50 years ago when they had the, the Yom Kippur war as well. It was very similar. So his name is, his last name is C-A-H-N. And he's a rabbi and he's on YouTube and he's, he's just incredible. He's a, he's a born again person, but yeah. he's got all the um, knowledge of the Jewish tradition as well. So he's, he's be really for this. Uh, uh, and if you're interested in going down that road and I'm not preaching on this on Sunday or anything, but I just found it to be interesting that these things should all co have alignment mm -hmm. at this point. All right, well, seven o'clock, and welcome, Gloria, to uh, our little session tonight. I think the ones that are not from San Rafael, I'll do the ones from San Rafael this week, and uh, maybe you, you might want to tell them that, but uh, that happens from week to week. Anyway, I'm going to close the recording.